Now, if you just finished the toy car demos that we did in the 801 default content, your next step is probably going to be something like crashing the car through a sheet of plate glass, right? I mean, that's that seemed like the obvious next step to me. Um, and so, that's what we're going to do, folks. Let's watch this again. I just like watching that. Sorry about the sound effects. It's just, uh, I just, I can't watch it without doing the sound effects. Anyway, um, it's going to be super fun. It's actually surprisingly easy. In fact, it is almost identical to the process that we did when knocking over that uh, big pile of blocks in uh, in the default content. So let's give this a try. Now, uh, here we are in my default scene. And as I come through here, we've got an animation. We've got a car that is path constrained to a curve. And that uh, as he kind of flies along the air, we've actually got his roll value animating as well. So he kind of twists as he flies through the air so that hopefully he's going to land like on his roll cage on the other side and kind of bounce along. It's going to be really cool. But anyway, uh, when we go through this glass, right about there, bam, right there, we need to swap this glass out for, um, for a shattered uh, glass model and then shatter the pieces all over the place. So let's do that. The first uh, step, of course, is going to be cre to create the geometry for the shattered glass. So let's go to the setup tab here, make it a little bit easier to do this. And uh, I'm going to hide my camera there because I just really don't need to see it. And before I get started, uh, one thing that's always a good idea is to rename your stuff so you know uh, what you're doing. So this is going to be our glass unshattered. So we just don't forget which piece is which here. So we'll take that and head up to Geometry, Mesh Shatter, new in 801, and down to Radial. Now, once I run this, I'm going to run it with the default settings. Just click OK. It's going to think for just a minute, do some weird stuff on the screen. And next thing you know, we're going to end up with, um, well, not exactly what we'd hoped for, right? Um, first problem is the center is way down here at the bottom, which uh, is not right. We need it to be up where the bumper is. Um, secondly, uh, these pieces are very uniform and concentric, which clearly is probably not very realistic for glass. And finally, uh, we need a lot more pieces than this. Uh, this is not going to be nearly enough to look convincing. So let's fix each of those problems, starting with the center. It turns out that the mesh shatter command uses the item center as the center of the little explosion. So let's go to um, uh, frame 30, right where our car intersects with the glass. And then notice that the glass's item center is actually over here on the origin because I probably moved the glass in polygon selection mode, thus leaving that center uh, over there where it lie. But that's easy to fix. Fear not. <laughs> we'll just go up to center selection mode. Let's select that center, W for move, and move it right on up. And I'm just going to move it to uh, right where our bumper intersects with the glass. Something right about like that. That should be good. And that's going to fix that problem for us. So let's select that glass again. We'll do geometry, mesh shatter, radial once again. Now this time let's change some settings. Uh, radial rays and rings. I'm going to set both of those to 18 for the moment. Um, just because I think that's, that's going to be enough pieces. And then let's go down to the random distance. And we don't want to set that too high. If you set that up at, uh, you know, 50%, for example, then you're going to lose the radial effect entirely. It's just going to look like one big random jumble of broken pieces. So let's actually set this to something reasonably small, like 5%. And that way it's going to look nice and random, but uh, still have kind of a radial feel to it. And I believe... That's going to do it. Let's just hit OK. And there we have it. That is pretty much it. And uh, those are all in a group locator, all nice and organized for us. So let's double click. Actually, let's just rename this group locator first of all. I'm going to right click and rename. Let's call this glass shards just by itself. There we go. Just so we know what that is once again. And now we need to apply our dynamic forces, and we're going to do that the exact same way that we did in the, uh, in the dynamics video in the showcase. So let's go ahead and double click on the shards and control click to deselect the group locator itself. Head to our dynamics tools, and I'm going to make those active rigid bodies so those can do whatever they want. And next we're going to head over to the dynamic tab for those and set their sleep mode. Let's make those passive so that they will not explode until we tell them to. 
and we're going to wake on velocity of 0.01, something like that. So it's nice and nice and small. Also, one other little thing, um, I like to set the friction up to um, something much higher. Let's set it to 80% because that's going to help these things explode outward better if the edges kind of grip to each other a little bit. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we need to do. So we can take that and deselect it. Now, one other thing, you'll notice that we have um, red glass right now, uh, which looks wicked cool in the render, <laughs> but uh, sadly, I don't think our glass is going to turn into molten red 2,000 degree glass as soon as our car hits it. That's probably not physically realistic. So um, to get rid of that, uh, we do have a shatter interior material that was created by default. That was actually an option in the tool that I didn't point out. You don't have to create that, but it's nice to create it in case you do want it later on. But what I'm going to do is actually expand that, expand my glass. I'm going to right click the glass material, make an instance of that and drop it into the shatter interior. So those end up being the same uh, material again. So now it just looks like shattered glass, and that's going to work uh, perfectly fine for us. Okay, so back in the setup tab, let's finish up our, um, our simulation here. Next, we need to select the car body, and let's make that a uh, kinematic rigid body. Perfect. And finally, we are going to need to select the floor. Let me grab our uh, floor item here. Let's show that for the moment and make that a static rigid body. Now, that is going to need to be visible now. Uh, the floor, that is, uh, because otherwise it will not interact with our simulation. So now that we've done that, uh, we should have a simulation that works. So let's run the cache as frame 0 to 48. Okay. And now we should be able to scrub and see what happens. Whoops. Looks like we have an issue. So let me uh, look at my floor dynamics. And oh, collision shape is set to hull. We need to change that. I'm going to change it to mesh. That way it's actually going to use the floor mesh itself. The hull won't work because this is a concave shape, and uh, hull mode does not work on concave shapes because it makes a convex shape by definition. Okay, let's run that one more time. And there we have it. Let's uh, scrub through this. Boom. Looking good. That looks sweet. And now that we've cached this, we don't actually have to keep the floor visible, so I can hide that again. And uh, because we've cached our simulation, uh, these guys will keep functioning in exactly the same way. Perfect. So let's go back here to about right about there, zoop, right where it explodes, and go over here and look at our render. And uh, that looks pretty great, pretty great as far as I'm concerned. I think uh, I think we're done here, folks. And what you're going to end up with, hopefully, is something kind of like this. <laughs> All right, have fun with that.